This is the second session in an ongoing investigation of the events surrounding the destruction of Lockhart Reed-owned Orbital Station Concord, positioned near the wormhole designated I-87. The station lost communications on the 17th of March, when the next ship came through I-87 on the 23rd after a lengthy wait for a wormhole storm to dissipate. They found the station destroyed from an explosion believed to have originated from its engines. Very little physical evidence remains, and all onboard personnel are presumed dead. The way station. Continuing from the previous session, the crew of Concord had settled into their new home for the six-month work shift. Further recordings during the interim months of January and February provide little in the way of contextualizing the events of the station, save for personnel characteristics and profiling. However, for the benefit of posterity, three key personnel on Concord had several audio recordings that will be used to understand crew relationships, as well as factors that contributed to the station's eventual destruction. The first recording for the session comes from the CR device of engineer Kelson Rickey, dated the 27th of February, the same day that the ship Giacomo docked at Concord. Hi, Lucia. Sorry it's been a while. Work here's been... What's the time? <sighs> Fuck. I can't sleep from being down there all day. I mean, I'm up in that control room for most of it, but it's still there. The noise of it. Fuck. We got another ship today. Fifth time since January. Been nice to see different people sometimes. Helps being around the same people for the next four months. The ship, uh, it's called Jacamar something. It's waiting to pass through the wormhole, waiting for a long storm to dissipate. Speaking of storms, I uh, found some more out about a resident physicist. I think I told you about her. Professor Yoshida? She's studying the wormhole for an article. Beats me what she can learn from that swirling hole of stars, but. Anyway, work's been fine. Tedious. Laborious. Yeah, but it's work. Hatcher can piss me off sometimes. Can't understand how Armitage puts up with that British asshole. I suppose Jago and Thoreau are the closest to likable co-workers on this station. Jago's my boss, though, and she is, uh... Fine. Tolerable. Thoreau's an odd one. I thought she might be a... No, of course she isn't. She's fine too. I guess. Sometimes I go to the observation deck on my breaks. It's quiet there. And... peaceful. You know, she does there pretty much all the time except when she sleeps. Whenever that is. She doesn't mind me being there as far as I can tell. I just sit next to her, look out the large window as Concord orbits. <sighs> I need to sleep. I'll send something soon. Bye. The next recording is the ninth entry of an audio diary authored by Dr. Laura Scannell. 
March 10th, 2152. <clears throat> Still no injuries from any Concord personnel, thankfully. Well, I, I tell a lie. A few bruises here and there, mostly the engineers. George Armitage, one of them, had a nasty cough a couple days ago, but that's cleared up now. Dr. Brown was sceptical. It had originated from the noxious engine gases down there, but I don't know. He only coughed up sputum. No phlegm and thankfully no blood. I still have no clue how they work down there. The only major injuries Dr. Brown and I have had to deal with is from external occupants of Concord. Our first freighter in the sixth month shift, the Caliban, had a worker with a nasty spiral fracture in his left leg pre-arrival. We didn't get a firm cause, oddly. Then our fourth visit from a mining vessel a week ago, the Muscaria, had a digger. Lawrence was his name, who had severe third-degree burns to his entire left arm. This time we did get a course, but I'd rather not remind myself about it. We could only do so much as cleaning and debriding the burns. Lawrence... Lawrence was incredibly brave during it, taking the pain well before we gave him any medication. A tetanus shot and half of our silver nitrate supply later, we had him ready to go. Our ward doesn't have serious surgical equipment, only the basics. So I told the Muscaria crew that Lawrence needed to go to a hospital right away. They went through the wormhole a few hours later. And I hope that he's all right. Where's that? Where's that got to? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> and, uh, well, <laughs> that's pretty much the extent of injuries on Concord. Whilst I am bored for the most part, and Brown setting me sorting and menial tasks that would be fit for a cabin boy, if anything, I am thankful that no one is hurt beyond our expertise. Concord is a safe place. Nearly two and a half months without incident has proven that. I think that's it. Right. Dr. Laura Scannell, ending recording. Ma'am. I had a chance to interview crew persons of the several ships that docked at Concord before March 17th. If we may briefly step away from the recordings? Yes, proceed. During the coalition process, I asked each of them what they thought of the crew, the station, and its eventual destruction. I've edited together the various statements from the crews of the Caliban, Muscaria, Celestiel, and Giacomo, whilst the ships were docked at Cygnipus. Didn't really think anything of them. They were friendly, I guess. That admin guy. East European. What's his name? Toparov. That's him, yeah. He was a bit shady to me. Well, I mean, what company type isn't? But we haven't got anything against company types, do we? Oh, oh no. Just a uh, bit shady's all. Well, it was quite nice but it was one of the worst stations I've been on for a kip. I, I mean, you thought the Dry Dock Motel was bad? <laughs> you ain't slept on Concord yet. And the crew? <sighs> I I've met worse. Engineers kept themselves safe for this one funny English guy. Security was a fucking pain, though. I I I'm not sorry they're gone. One of our miners, Lawrence, got pretty badly burned during a shift in the extractor. The two quacks there really helped him before we got him to an hospital. Shit my pants when I saw him first. He was fucked up. Yeah, he managed to pull through though. Really fucked up. What? Sorry, she's shy. It's all right. What's that? They were good people. She says they were good people. And you? Yeah, thought they were all right. Sorry to hear about them. What's this for? Yes. I said, I didn't get a word from her. Okay? Right, right. Now you're listening. Mm -hmm. What? I fucking know, asswipe. Do you really think I could have. Excuse me? Jesus. I'll call you back. What do you want? Federal Police, Agent Hannah Dahl, SI 1.2. Yeah, yeah, Sugar Plum, I get it. What do you want? 
You were one of the crew of the Celestial. Yes, and? You were one of the last people on Concord still alive. Am I getting a medal or something? Get to the point! I was hoping you'd tell me some things about the station. Your opinions. Oh, my opinions? Right, well, um... I'm... uh, Sorry they died. Is that enough? Is that it? I think so. Now, is there anything else? Hmm? No? Okay, then. Good. Well, uh, bye now. Generally well-liked, then? From what I could glean, yes. Continue. The next recording was from the CR device belonging to Professor Takari Yoshida, dated March 15th, three days before communication ceased. It appears to be intended for her mother, however, after contacting Professor Yoshida's mother, I found that this recording was never sent out. I apologize for missing to send you a message. I hope you're not too worried. Things on Concord haven't changed much since the last one. I'm continuing my studies and communicating with Asato-senpai. I believe that you have met him. He is my senior professor at Logatha. Highly respected. I hope you are all right. I know that it's hard on your own these days. You wanted me close since Otosan died. I'm sure Misha is keeping you better company than I could have whilst working. It is going fine this end otherwise. I am making progress, as much as I can, anyway. I won't bother you with the specifics. Wormhole fluctuations are a myriad of riddles. I know you wanted me to try and talk to the crew, at least anyone other than Thoreau or that Ricky, the one I told you about. It's just... I don't think they're below me, it's just that... I feel they just won't understand half of what I'm talking about. There's not much else I talk about other than my work here. It's my life. At least Thoreau seems interested. She's no physicist, but she's keen. Can't imagine why. It bores you, doesn't it? (laughs) We're nearly halfway through our shift. For me, it's only another two months, and by then I'm certain. Certain that I'll crack the patterns. There must be some correlation, causation to the storms. With the answer, it'll change interstellar travel for the better. I'm still timing this storm for now, however long it'll last. I'll make you proud, Okasa. I'll... What is... (laughs) Toporov, are you there? Yes, what is it, Professor? I'm on the observation deck, and, well, there's something strange coming out of the wormhole. What? What do you mean? Hold on. The next recording is chronologically concurrent with the previous recording. It was a monthly video report made by Administrator Toprov, the last one he sent to Lockhart Reed. The company archives fortunately allowed us access to this message for the investigation. Hello, Augustine. Nice to see you again. This is the most report for you. Not much in the way of divergences. The written report has better details than I can give you. We had some external crew members from the dog's ships in for injuries, but apart from that, we're safe from incident. I guess I stand corrected about the lack security detail. Nothing from the external crew that suggests possible protest or activity.
Uh, I'm surprised, honestly. You'd have thought in the bleak midwinter they'd try to make it bleaker. But I'm not complaining, of course. I doubt it'll even happen. Halfway there, eh? Toporov, are you there? Yes, what is it, Professor? I'm on the observation deck and, well, there's something strange coming out of the wormhole. What? What do you mean? Hold on. Something... red. Something bright, small, and... Red. Hang on. Shit. Toporov? Right. We're... We're going to need to get the shuttle out. Say that again? A lot of regulations say we have to retrieve that. But... I mean... You can see it, right? Doesn't matter what it is, Professor. Anything that comes in or out of that wormhole that isn't part of the schedule must be investigated. I think you should stay here. Watch the shuttle at work. Attention personnel. An unidentified unscheduled object has emerged from I-87. In keeping with company regulation, we have to retrieve and investigate it. I'm in touch. Gotcha. Ricky. Shoot up and head for the shuttle. You three have the best space walking and flight experience. Wheeler, go with them. If anyone wants to watch the show, I suggest they join Professor Yoshida on the observation deck. Dilson and Jago, come up to my office. <sighs> Talk soon, Augustine. It is unknown precisely what occurred next. In the debris of Concord, no trace of its shuttle was found suggesting that it had been separated from the station prior to its destruction. This could infer someone had survived the events on the station. However, this indicative information has yet to surface. From the lack of security footage within the shuttle and the next chronological recording, it can be surmised that the shuttle crew of George Armitage, Jack Hatcher, Kelson Rickey, and security support Mitch Wheeler retrieved the unidentified red object from the orbit of I-87. The next recording was a group recording within Concord's cafeteria. Is it on one of the Amazing. tables? I thought you said it was bright. Yeah, yeah. it was. Daddy, you would have thought it was this. No, light. Back it up, give us some space, mm -hmm. guys. Oh, oh, put it in the shuttle, it's, it's artificial gravity. God, careful! It's heavy like an anvil, but when we picked it up, it was light enough to lift suddenly. We're as surprised as you are. Prof, didn't you say it was red? Shining red? I know it's not now, but it's what I saw. I can't say for certain how it was, even. Well, it could have been a hallucination for all we know. I saw it as well, on the exterior. And when I was flying the shuttle, it wasn't hard to find a shining red meteor. So... we can rule out the shared hallucination idea, right? But surely, if it was shining red, wouldn't it be moving very fast? Like something burning up in an atmosphere on re-entry? I did suppose that, but you found it stationary? And it was in orbit? And then when the shuttle approached it... Yeah, it faded. Fucking weird. Nothing disrupted Have shuttle control? No. It worked fine the whole way, no. to and from. What do the regulations say we do next, then? Well, considering what some of us saw, myself included, I say that we need to examine this thing closely. I'm assuming the regulations don't mention strange red objects coming out of wormholes? Take a number, Bridget. Jago, we have that industrial cutter still on the operation deck, don't we? Yeah, replacing one of the panels. Um, Armitage, Hatcher, get the cutter up here. Righto. Come on, Hatch! Professor Yoshida, if you would. If I... Have a look at it. You're the physicist. It can't be, like, I don't know, radioactive, maybe? Shuttle didn't pick up anything from it. No radio waves, microwaves, any kind of waves. Except the light. Apart from that, it was like nothing could tell it was there. Well, as much as I enjoy the mystery of the cosmos, I'm going back to the ward. I'm sure some of you have things to do as well. Scannell? I think I might stay, Dr. Brown. I'm intrigued by Scannell? The... Right, yes, sorry. Well, Professor. For the moment, I can tell that it has a carbon-based surface. 
trace elements I wouldn't bet against. If I had to guess, magnesium, maybe zinc. Hard to tell with just the surface layer. We'll soon find out. Is that your first time in the shuttle, Mitch? Yeah. I need a glass of water. <laughs> Sit down. I'll get you one. You all right, Ricky? Hmm? Oh, yeah. You look a bit, I don't know, beaky? Well, first time in space not attached to a station. Fair enough. You got yeah. any idea what this Thanks. is? No clue. Oddly smooth for being quite jagged and rough looking. What was that, officer? Touch it. Huh. You wouldn't have thought it would feel like that from what it looks like. Strange. Well, we'll soon see what's underneath it. Never know. Uh, an interesting find. Hey! Not you two. Guess Professor, the row, you want to step back. Due to the lengthy time it took George Armitage and Jack Hatcher to cut through the celestial object, I will skip ahead to when they turn the cutter off. During the interim, Mitch Wheeler, Rosie Bridger, and Kelson Ricky left. Alright, that'll do. Hatcher, turn it off! Jesus. It's really dark in there. What? Have a look, Prof. Do you have a flashlight? Uh, yeah, one sec. <sighs> Fascinating. What is it? Look, it absorbs light. What does? The inside of the meteorite. How can it do that? I don't know. Oh, hold on a moment. Whoa, hey! Maybe we should poke something in there other than your hand? Yes, sorry. Step back, Professor. Let's see. Uh, Hatch, give me your wrench. Yeah, here you go. Thanks. <sighs> it just disappears. Anything? Uh, no, can't feel anything. It's like it's empty, but it's like it's heavy. How is that possible? I'm just as confused as you. Um, but how could it shine like that if it's empty? Hang on a moment. There's something... Ah! Get into the ground! It's that Right, shit, fuck. Um, come on. Jago, go with them. Okay, on it. Me? Oh, the raw. Um, just, I don't know. Go with him if you'd like. Toparov. Gryadipoga. Toparov? What? What is it? There's something inside. What is it? Blood? No. Light. Red. Light. Not a word, you two. To anyone. The recording abruptly ceases. Another recording in the cafeteria was made an hour later. It's fine. We will be anyway. Whatever cut him, cut him deep. To the bone. God. Brown and Scannell did what they could, but they said it was unlikely he'll be able to use it again. Our next scheduled dog is a couple days from now. We can get him out there and he can make planet fall. And what about that? Professor? It's nothing like I've ever seen before. The meteorite itself is simple enough. It has elements I know of. Carbon, magnesium... If I had to venture a guess, I'd say it's more of a shell than an actual meteorite. A shell? What do you mean? The layer of rock there, about one foot of solid material, then an empty space of utter light-absorbing darkness. In the middle, a red, light-exuding yolk. Um, I'm sorry, Professor, I don't understand. You're saying that- I made that... a scan into that dark space within. There was nothing there. Like a vacuum. And in the center? I know it's not radioactive. And? And it has no elements from the periodic table. What we are looking at is something that no one has ever seen before. Normally, I would be ecstatic about such a discovery, but there's one thing that's worrying me. What? Armitage got badly wounded by something in there. I thought he may have just cut it on the side of the shell. The edges are sharp. That's what's worrying you? No. 
I'm worried about the fact that I couldn't find any trace of his blood in there. Not a drop. Dilsen, turn that off. Got it. Professor, Thoreau, I need to speak alone with The recording again abruptly ceases. There was no discernible record available for the private conversation between the administrator, head of engineering, and head of security. I can only assume it was to discuss the events of that day, and to report it to the company. I did reach several Lockhart Reed communication bureaus responsible for their orbital station's contact links, finding that the station did not report anything unusual before the sudden blackout on March 17th. And there were no ships that docked just before the 17th? No, ma'am. There was a scheduled docking on the same day, but a wormhole fluctuation forced the passing ship to remain docked at Concord's sister station on Tante on the other side of I-87. This is the wormhole storm? Yes. It lasted from the 15th to the 23rd. Eight days. And the wormhole storm started when this meteorite appeared? Yes, ma'am. I see. We can leave it there for today, then, doll. Yes, ma'am. Second session of Concord investigation concluded. Agent Hannah Dahl, SI 1.2. Signing out. Nicole Tuttle as Hannah Dahl. Daphne Nitsuga as Professor Takara Yoshida. Elizabeth Plant as Dr. Laura Scannell. Odd Andrews as Mitch Wheeler. Binar as Kelson Ricky. Zach Cipriano as Jack Hatcher. Saito Kapiyama as Avel Tapara. Catherine Ann Brasto as Edith Thoreau. Adigail Stewart as Rosie Bridger. Kessie Rudaniki as Dr. Mona Brown. Eleanor Anwin as Freya Jago. Aaron B. Lillis as Ramsey Tilson. Mike Joseph as George Armitage. Meredith Lisa Jones as Superior. Jeffrey Stanley, A.J. Carter, Nathan Ragland, Grania Robson, James Strickland, Holly Sophia, and Sox Whitmore as crew members. Written and directed by Elliot Summerfield. Additional mixing by Catherine Stanley. The Way Station, composed and performed by Detenda Shimiso. Cover art by Paul Ignacio. A Wired Cowslip Podcast.